Hi everyone and welcome back. So in this video we are going to take a look on the Kamunda tooling. Okay, what all components Kamunda provides. So once you are running Kamunda, so I'm already running Kamunda uh, using Docker Compose file which I have already provided here. You just do Docker Compose up, it will spin up the MySQL and the Kamunda container. And here I can just access Kamunda. Okay, so this is running on Java Tomcat server. And you just provide your username password default demo demo and you are inside okay now what all kamunda tools we are using so cockpit task list and admin these are important tools and there is a modeler this is modeler okay then we have cockpit task list and admin tool you can go to the cockpit here you can see all the kamunda diagrams which has which you have already deployed all the process definitions all the processes you can see all the processes which we have already deployed you can go to the task list if there are independent tasks like user tasks are available you can see this you can also see how many deployments has already happened okay so go to our cockpit here we can see uh, the running process how many deployments has already happened so whenever you are doing the deployment through so the Kamunda modeler, everything is being received here. Because Kamunda modeler is doing nothing but it is hitting the post call because Kamunda engine is nothing but a REST interface. Right? This is a REST engine. So whenever you need to deploy any new diagram, what you do is you use this modeler. This is my modeler and what I do is click on to this and hit deploy. And it is executing this REST endpoint. And this particular XML file, because every diagram is nothing but an XML definition. This is the XML definition. It is just doing the post on this endpoint and it is deploying to the Kamunda engine. And here we can see that all the deployments and different version. And Kamunda automatically switched to the latest version when you deploy the latest version of the same workflow. Okay, I mean it will not discard the, the previous workflow and if there are running tasks uh, on that. But whenever there is a new task is coming, it will always use the latest deployed workflow. Okay, going to our task list and the processes. So, I mean, this is how we can use our Kamunda. And this is the modeler which we are already using to, I mean, uh, create a workflow diagrams and deploy them. So, this is whenever you wanted to start a process either you because process is nothing but a rest interface right if you wanted to start any particular process in the kamunda engine it is providing the rest interface you can go ahead and hit a post from the postman or you can use this start a process like i am just passing the action received here you can also add a variable you can keep adding the variable whatever you wanted to pass and you just Start it so it will actually start the Kamunda process and with these set of variables. Okay, we will also see this through the the UI interface how we can execute uh, a Kamunda workflow through the UI because it is nothing but it is hitting the post API. Okay. Now let's try to understand this. So this Kamunda engine is doing nothing but executing this workflow and managing the different versions of the workflow. And there is a database. It is attached to the MySQL database. Because Kamunda engine is storing a lot of information about your workflow, about your users, about the about the different type of tasks, all the config, configuration it is storing storing inside a database. Okay, so you are execute, you are putting or deploying this kind of a workflow to the Kamunda engine. Now Kamunda engine will manage it. What you will do is externally you will hit the post call, you will start the process, and these process can be a process expression based. These can point to some microservices like this. This task can point to a microservice or can be pointing to a Java delegate class or can be pointing to a simple custom expression. So this is nothing but this is a, a piece of software you can execute. That piece of software can be external service, can be a Java, Java class or can be a simple custom expression, right? That is nothing but executing something for your whole workflow. Okay, once this task is done, this will execute, this will execute and your workflow will complete, right? 
and we can administrate all these things through the task list, admin and cockpit. These are the, the part of Kamunda engine and that is exposed through the Kamunda UI. Here we, you can see uh, we can do all sort of things. We can create tasks, we can start tasks and this is the admin. Admin where it is managing the set of users you need. Uh, I mean currently we are just using the default user which is admin and we are just passing the DOM demo demo for the logged in user. Okay. So that is a basic configuration about Kamunda and we can also talk about how Kamunda is going to orchestrate things. We will talk about how Kamunda is going to act as the event bus. Okay. This is a simple Kamunda workflow and it is being executed inside a. Uh, so this is the Kamunda engine right and what we are doing is there is an external interface which is hitting the post API will start this Kamunda process. Now these service tasks, these tasks can point to a different microservices because whenever you see the service task, there are a lot of things you can configure. If we just look into this, you can point it to a topic, external, delegate expression, Java class, let's say external. External it means there is an external entity which is going to execute some piece of software code and that will determine the state of this service task. This is what we are talking here. So you can create a microservice event driven architecture considering this workflow engine as an event bus. Task one will be delegated to the microservice one. There will be some event once the microservice will complete the task we will go to the task two. So through this whole process what we are able to achieve. We are able to achieve the overall the state of this whole process because Kamunda will manage the, the overall state of the process. Let's say you are talking about simple user create task and you have orchestrated this workflow through the VPMNs. What we are doing is from the actor, actor will invoke this Kamunda workflow. In some process you might have already written a logic which is creating the user let's say. Okay. It is going to talk to simple microservices and they will create a user in your database now and then that particular service will say okay I'm done with my task. Task 2 will execute okay that sends the notification to the user that will be delegated to the microservice 2. Microservice 2 will say okay I'm done with my task then it will be microservice 3, microservice 4. So you can see the sequential execution of the microservices and it's like an event driven. One microservice is we are throwing an event to the microservice it is it is coming back with a response. So you can consider this workflow engine as an event bus. Task 1 is getting done, task 2, task 3 and we are also maintaining the overall state where is the failure lies. Okay notification failed then you can see visualize this in the Kamunda and you can write a manual retry or something in every 5 minute or 10 minute it will keep retrying for sending the notification to the user create. Okay. I mean you can also compensate uh, the workflow if there is any failure error happens because this is all asynchronous you can do retry all these you can retry you can pull for the long running task all these things are available in the workflow engine. But what we are getting is we are getting the overall state of the user create task how many user creates are successful how many are stuck somewhere right and what is the current user state and if you are executing this task 10 times there will be the 10 process instance of this workflow. In the system and for every instance you can see where it has stuck what is the pro what are the process variables and the overall journey of this workflow also maintains the variables in the overall journey variables are nothing but the Kamunda workflow state okay you are populating the, the user id username password in the workflow and notification needs the user id so it will go to the microservice will get the data for this user send notification then this is okay send the uh, send the another job email to the user. So you already have a user ID in the, the workflow state. So these are called the process variables which you can reuse. You can populate the new process variable also. Task 1 is done. I wanted to populate a variable in notification send true. You can return the notification sent from this microservice that will be added in the workflow process variable. Now task 2 want to use okay if the not if send notification is true from the previous task then I will do this okay. So if we talk about these things these can be used here. So what we are doing here is here I can add a gateway 
let's say and gateway will decide okay i wanted to do this or i want to do that based on some expression so there can be a let's say service task here which is going to populate some variable in the process flow and that variable i can i can use anywhere i can use here if that variable is i mean the very value of this variable uh, i think expressions are written like this or like variable is if variable value is 1 then i will do this variable value 2 then i will do that so these kind of expressions we can write and then finally we can go here right these are conditional expressions so based on the process variable which you are getting because when you are executing this service task there might be a case okay i want to execute something based on the outcome from this the this particular task this particular task is talking to a microservice one and this will give me some output based on that i will decide okay i will execute this or i i will execute that okay there can be a something like okay there is a user task here we can put uh, one user task we just draw this again this is a user task we have placed before and what this user task will do is you will manually complete it or there is a script is going to complete this and here using this user task you are going to populate a process variable in the system in this whole workflow instance that will say okay if this is true then do this if this is true then do that okay you can manually decide i want to go to this particular flow or this particular flow okay don't look at the diagram i mean things are okay but uh, this is little let i can expand it so things look good this is fine now right so like this is a user task i have and using this user task we can complete a user task through the postman also this user task we will complete and we will pass some pro some variable also while completing this task and those variables we can use to decide to go this path or to go that particular path okay so this can be a microservice can be a user task these microservices can return at some data and that data we can populate in the process variables and those process variables can be used in further sequence to decide where to go okay now we are saying okay we will be populating these variables in the process variable how that actually happening that is happening through the listener service kamunda is providing a, no, a node.js sdk javascript sdk which is a listener service and whenever your process let's say uh, coming to this our kamunda example whenever the execution is coming here and it is say okay the external task is topic then it will look for is there any one listening to this particular task if you are listening to this particular topic then it will delegate this particular execution to that topic that topic can be a microservice okay I, once this task is done you can return some data and you can just return status code 200 and say everything is okay it will go ahead and close this workflow i mean we are done it will go further and it will close it complete it okay so that is important thing here how we can use this uh, workflow engine as a event bus this diagram try to explain it how we can use it like this because here this independent task can points to a different microservices and those microservices can be totally decoupled okay and uh, those microservices can populate some data so that this can be dependent on the data but what you need what you should always try to have is purely decoupled microservices whatever these microservices need data populate it from one process and let the data flow so this microservice doesn't depend on this but 
there can be a dependency okay task 3 should not happen before task 2 task 2 does not happen before task 1 right this kind of uh, interdependency you can maintain because this is your business you should not want to send a notification to user before even creating it right so that is defined by the business workflow okay that's it guys now it's time to see more uh, workflow and then orchestrating these service tasks through the different set of microservices and we are going to plug a front-end application also that will execute the whole workflow.